Hi, welcome back to Sotoku Tech. I had a lot of fun working with this relay shield using an Arduino Uno to control a Raspberry Pi. So when I saw this LilyGo TTGo T relay, it's an ESP32 on the four relay module board. I just had to get that. So let's unbox this and see what we can do with a couple of these example sketches from the library. All right, let's take the T-Relay out of the box. In this case, it came in a bag. And yeah, it's kind of hard to get those big bulky relays past the Ziploc there. There we go, let's get a closer look. Okay, on the power block, you need 12 to 24 volts. And that just powers the relays. There's your ESP32, a reset button. There's four LEDs here. On the relay side, you have the normally closed and normally open headers, and then there's a common pin for each. And these relays are not electrically connected to anything on the relay board. They're basically on-off switches for whatever device you choose to connect. There's lots of I.O. pins left over, and I'm thinking you could attach sensors here to operate the relays. That would be an interesting project. And of course, don't forget, you need the TU2T serial dongle to do the programming. If you haven't bought one already, make sure to get one with your T-Relay. Okay, so let's talk about the prerequisites you'll need for the working with the T-Relay in the Arduino IDE. You're going to want this CH340 driver that works with the TU2T serial dongle here that you need to program the T-Relay. Here, they suggest using this board manager URL, remember under File, Preferences, Additional Board Manager URLs, but I already have the original Espressif board manager URL in here already, so I don't know what the difference is between the two, but I see that I can select the ESP32 dev module as a board here, so I'm thinking we're just going to go ahead just as it is. So I'm not going to use the board manager URL they're specifying here. Now we need to go ahead and get these four libraries installed as well. So we're opening library manager and I'm able to search and readily find the blink library right away. We go ahead and install that. And same for the ESP dash library. Just search that, and it's right there at the top of the list. We go ahead and install that. Now, the next two libraries didn't show up when I was searching Library Manager, at least not obviously. So I went ahead to the async TCP GitHub repository and downloaded that as a zip. And then in the Arduino IDE, I went to Library Manager Add Zip Library. Browse to where you downloaded the zip file, and there you go. Async TCP library is installed. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the ESP async web server. Download the zip in Arduino IDE. Include library, add zip library. Again, browse to where we downloaded that zip file, and go ahead and add that. There we go. We have all of the requisite code here. Now I'm back at the T relay library. I'm downloading that as a zip. We're going to go ahead and unzip that. I'm just going to copy this main folder into my documents Arduino folder. There we go. Now that we've got the main folder with the example sketches copied into our Documents Arduino folder, we can go ahead and open the example sketches. But I'm going to give you a word of warning here. I discovered that the Blink example sketch is compatible with an older version of Blink. Blink has migrated to their IoT cloud. It's an entirely different application on your phone than the legacy Blink app. And if you didn't already sign up under the Legacy Blink app, you can't create a new account. And this example sketch doesn't work with the Blink IoT cloud. And you can see here, the Legacy app 
says, I don't have an account. You can see here, I've got the API key from Blink IoT Cloud, but it's not letting my T-Relay connect to Blink. So let's check out this interactive web server demo. I think this is going to be cool. Yeah, you can see the setup for the relay is relatively simple. You got three of the libraries that we installed or used here. You just need to add your Wi-Fi, SSID, and password to the sketch. We're going to go ahead and upload that to the T-Relay right now. And once that's done, you want to go ahead and open the serial monitor and reset the board again because it already went by. So you have to reset. But there you see the IP address of your T-Relay. So now you can open the web page and let's see what we're going to do next. Okay, so I wanted to create something really interactive and exciting here. So, so now we just get the first LED strip working with the microphone program so that it's responding to the music. The rest of the strings, as I turn them on, there's basically Bluetooth mesh. They're going to just mimic whatever the first string is doing. So let's play around a little bit here. We're going to be turning the strips off and on individually while we listen to some music. And again, you can see each of these LED strips has their own independent power supply controlled by that corresponding relay. These LED strips have nothing to do electrically with each other or with the T relay board other than the relays switching them off and on. Because this unit's powered by 12 volts, I see where you could come up with some pretty cool automotive applications for an ESP32 powered relay board. Uh, it sounds kind of interesting. Leave a comment down below what you might like to try. This is fun. Let's check it out. We're going to switch these off and on. Yeah, switching those middle reels off and on alternately. There we go. Okay, so I was a little disappointed. The blink thing didn't work out. We'll need to try again using the code for the new cloud IoT app. And I also want to try attaching sensors to the board. But I really had a lot of fun with the Dash interactive website. That was very cool. And so give this video a like. Leave a comment down below. And before you go watch some of my TTGO T display videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.